Hello, and thank you for watching this video from Becker and Hickel, your TCSPC and FLIM expert. Today I will show how to record FLIM using our confocal laser scanning system, the DCS120. The DCS120 measures fluorescence signals. And any fluorescence signal has three main properties. It's the intensity, which is very sensitive to the presence of the fluorophore. It's the spectrum, which helps us to separate fluorophores from each other. And finally, there is the fluorescence lifetime. The fluorescence lifetime can also help to separate fluorophores. But even more importantly, it's sensitive to the molecular environment of the fluorophore, giving us great insight into the molecular function of the fluorophores. So with our DCS120 system, we can rock record fluorescence intensity and fluorescence lifetime. And if required, we can even do it in a multispectral manner with a 16-channel multispectral detector. What is actually the DCS120? The DCS120 is a confocal laser scanning system. We can mount the DCS120 on many different microscopes from Zeiss, Nikon, or Olympus. Here, in this example, we attached it to the Zeiss Observer 7 inverted microscope. The DCS120 is a modular system. In this example here, um, we configured it with a hybrid detector and a 16-channel multispectral detector. All these detectors are fast single photon counting detectors. To excite fluorescence, we use our laser hub. The laser hub contains up to four picosecond diet lasers, which are pulsed, with rock-stable single-mode fiber coupling. So no realignment is required. However, the core drop in the flim acquisition is done by a component which is not really visible here. It's hidden in the computer. These are TCSPC modules like this. This one is the SPC180NX, which provides pico, sub-picosecond time resolution. Okay, let's take a flim image. I have placed my sample on the microscope. It's roughly in focus. The sample which I have is a plant sample. It's fixed, it's relatively bright. And now I will start the preview mode in our measurement software called SPCM to double check for the focus. So I can uh, simply fine tune the focus. Now I'm out, going back. Yeah, here we go. Now we're in the focus. So I will stay in this plane, stop the preview, and start the flim acquisition. This one I have to con configure it to stop after five seconds. So now we have collected the data for about um, five seconds, eight frames. And now I can send this data over to SPC image for data analysis. To do so, I just um, click send data. SPC image NG is invoked. You can see the intensity preview over here. And all and I can start fitting already, just by hitting F2. I have already fitted the whole image with a mono-exponential uh, model. If I want to change this, I go to a bi-exponential model, hit F2, and we have fitted the whole image again. This is extremely fast because we use fitting on a graphics card. And if I just want to play with some more parameters and different models, I can easily repeat that. It's uh, just that easy. Now we have also the phaser plot built in here. In the phaser plot, which is very useful for FRET application, I can usually see the um, interacting and non-interacting uh, donor areas. I can use my selector to select certain areas and then you can see that pixels which belong to this area here are highlighted in the image. And if I move it around, different areas of the image are selected. 
Well, there are many more features in, uh, in the SPC image, something like 2D correlation and uh, masks, so region of interest selections. And of course, you can export your data for further data processing. How can you use this FLIM system? You can use it for molecular imaging. You can measure local pH changes or do calcium imaging or chloride imaging. With special agents like body P, you can even access local viscosity changes. Another popular application of FLIM is, is FRET. In FRET, in FLIM FRET, we measure the fluorescence emission only from the donor. So for that, actually, a single detector is sufficient. Um, FLIM FRET, since it measures only the emission from the donor, can also be used with dark acceptors, which do not emit fluorescence. Another popular application is uh, metabolic imaging. In metabolic imaging, we measure the autofluorescence of NADPH. And this allows us to access the uh, metabolic activity of cells. And of course, the uh, system can do FCS, fluorescence coloration spectroscopy. Since we do it with pulse lasers, we can also get the lifetime information. As mentioned in the beginning, this system here is equipped not only with a hybrid detector, but also with a 16-channel multispectral detector. So I still have my sample in place and in focus, so I can easily start the acquisition with the 16-channel multispectral detector. Um, of course, now we have 16 spectral channels. This means that the whole available signal is distributed into 16 parts. On the image here, on the left side, we see the intensity image, and actually we see 16 images. Each, each of them belongs to a spectral channel. On the right, we see the um, lifetime preview. And of course, in total, we have a um, weaker signal per spectral channel. I have configured the acquisition for 30 seconds here. Now I can send the data to SPC image for analysis. You can see the data transfer now takes longer because we have acquired a two gigabyte data set. And one it has prepared for display, I can start the fitting again. For example, with a bi-exponential model, and you can see that even with such big, huge data sets, fitting on the GPU is still really, really fast. The DCS120 is a modular system, which means that we use many components which you can also buy separately. For example, our series of hybrid detectors is really great. Five different photocathodes with different quantum efficiency are available. The Dash 40, the gas cathode, is highly efficient with a nearly 50% quantum efficiency and serves many needs. But there are also a red sensitive Dash 50 cathode and ultra fast Dash 6 and Dash 7 cathodes. All these detectors are also available as cooled versions, which strongly reduces the dark count, still having the big area of these detectors. In some situations, however, a um, cheaper PMC-150 uh, detector will do the job as well. Also here, many different cathodes are available. These are still fast single photon counting detectors with a huge area. It has a diameter of 8 millimeters. And of course, you can purchase our TCSPC modules. This one, the SPC-180NX, is an ultra-fast module with a time per bin of just 407 femtoseconds. So, not picoseconds, it's already femtoseconds. And of course, we sell our ultra-compact picosecond diet lasers. Uh, you can have them as a retail version with the blue fan, or if you're going for a OEM integration, you can get it without the fan for a smaller form factor. 
And we have many other small products around TCSPC and single photon counting. Please contact us and we will help you with your needs. If you want to learn more about FLIM and TCSPC and its applications, please check our huge TCSPC handbook. It has over 1,000 pages with many examples and applications and citations. And the best thing is you can get it for free from our website. Just go to our website and download the PDF. Also there, in the section of application notes, you can find many other demonstrations of FLIM. Like this one, for example. This is ultra-fast FLIM on mushrooms. So mushrooms show not only a weak signals, but also very different lifetimes ranging from nanoseconds to very short lifetimes of just few picoseconds. Another interesting application note is, is this one. Here, together with the GPL NASA labs, we have measured an IRF of just 4.4 picoseconds total width. Absolutely crazy fast. So it's not just ultra fast, it's crazy fast. Go to our, our website, check all these great resources, and don't forget, high performance flim is back and tackle flim. Thank you for watching.